So our next, uh, our next speaker is going to be speaking about crystalline basement uh, exploration and possibilities. Kale Kirsima from the Estonian Academy of Sciences, University of Tartu, please. And, um, well, actually those uh, two days already, this is the third day I know, I was not able to, to join you here in person yesterday, but I've, as much as I could, I, I followed all the presentations and, uh, and yesterday, late in the evening, during this feast, it was already clear that how important such uh, meetings are. Not only because, well, it was mentioned, someone mentioned yesterday that it, it, it's glad to see you all in, in person. So the, um, our lines are not that uh, crowded as it as were yesterday. Uh, probably still digesting the, the feast. But anyway, the point is like in person uh, meetings are really important and then just, just a few words and uh, ideas that to drop meeting people person in, in uh, can can change something and can can start something new and uh, I really enjoyed yesterday's uh, talks well it was uh, pretty loud there but but we already started something new and uh, and I feel that um, uh, you have you have told us uh, about the cooperation projects in Europe but I do see, and this was already asked here, that what, what, what could be the benefit for Estonian geology, Estonian geologists from those corporations? And, and uh, this presentation that I'm going to give you, well, is, is an exa example where I do feel, personally, I do feel that, that our basic knowledge in this field uh, is, is not sufficient for... Uh, effective exploration or even to just to understand what we're dealing with. So we, we, we have something in the rock, we have noticed it, we have the tools to, to see it uh, and uh, to analyze it, but what, what its deeper meaning and where those finds I'm going to show you could lead us. And, and this, is, this, is exactly, this is exactly the topic where actually the, the cooperation with the Finnish Geological Survey would would actually uh, help us a, uh, a lot. So, but before I start, so I took the liberty to, to add, uh, uh, is there a the pointer? This is a pointer, yes, anyway, yes. So, um, uh, it was announced only me, but I, I, I added seam here, and I, I should have uh, added uh, even more people from the uh, survey, Estonian Geological Survey, because all this is based mostly on, on their uh, work and I'm I'm kind of like I, I, I guess it um, Alvar said something yesterday about uh, being a hobby geologist. So I'm a hobby uh, 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 geologist uh, uh, interested in in crystalline basement because I'm I'm well I, I told to someone I'm I'm not a petrologist. Uh, I don't know basically anything about the tectonics. My or geology education is who was about thirty years ago and. Uh, in back in Soviet time, so this is this is a, a journey to me, a challenge to me to to understand and, and to put all those things in context. But I'd I'd like to start with with uh, with, with really basic geology. If I'd ask the at least the Estonian colleagues here to take a piece of paper and a pencil and to draw Estonian geological map, then I guess that. Uh, the result would be something like this. Okay, maybe not that detail, but this is this is Estonian geology, and then this puts us in, into the context here. The Estonia is a classical Paleozoic country. Paleozoic geology, uh, the lower Paleozoic geology exposed here, defines most of the, the research, exploration, and uh, resources. So. Um, this is this is where we are, uh, uh, but uh, and and uh, there is no surprise that if if we look the this is a map uh, uh, from 2018. Well, the mineral resources in, in Estonia in, uh, that and uh, shown where they are distributed. Then then most of it, I think that except of two points here, 
are related to the Paleozoic crocs and quaternary. Um, the inheritance well, that we have from the glaciers that actually were in, in uh, Finland doing things as well. But anyway, the, this, is, this, is, this is where we are. And then here we have, of course, we have oil shale, we have the fossorite, we had uh, this uh, very nice presentation yesterday and, and um, interesting discussion that I'd like, I'd like to continue with, with some persons here in, in uh, later today. And then we have the gravel, peat, etc., and all those things. Those are all sedimentary resources. But uh, what about the crystalline pavement? So what do we know about the crystalline pavement and, it, and, and it, its potential? So if we strip off the, all the quaternary and all the Paleozoic, well, this, this, this would be the picture we see. This is a map that was uh, published already more than 25 years ago. And it had a, I, I, I cannot uh, uh, cite it exactly, but this was a, a joint project between the Finnish Geological Survey and the Finnish uh, geologists at the universities and the Estonian survey and, uh, and, and the universities, uh, the geologists at the, uh, uh, at the university, geologists at the universities to, to, to publish uh, map, geological maps at both sides of the Finnish Gulf. And this is kind of like, uh, this was one of the, I guess, at the, um, I don't know exactly the history, but this was probably one of the first kind of attempts of, uh, of doing this. By the way, if I'd ask uh, who of uh, us would draw this map. I guess that Alvaris is the only one who would kind of <laughs> take a pencil and then make it. But anyway, the, the point is, and, uh, and, and what, what we're looking here, well, these all metamorphic terrains, Vecafenian metamorphic terrain, um, different uh, aluminous uh, gneisses, uh, mafic protoli, uh, metamorphic uh, rocks on, on mafic protolites, and, and some uh, uh, volcanic stuff. And, and then we have those. Uh, Rabakivi granites intruding uh, through the, the pile, and the Rabakivis were discussed yesterday. Well, they, they really do have uh, great potential for uh, geothermics, um, which is a bit surprising in, in a way, but, uh, but there were. But, well, um, but there is a tiny problem with, with this uh, crystalline basement. Uh, well, it, it looks pretty nice figure, but it cannot be uh, seen anywhere on the, on the surface here. Um, at least in, in, uh, in, in mainland area, because, well, we, we do have somewhere here, if you look here, ooh, we have uh, the no ground uh, impact crater and there are crystalline rocks exposed within the Estonian territory, uh, uh, territorial waters, uh, but they are below the sea level. And I guess here, and you can correct me if it, it's 15 meters, well, there is another impact crater, cattle impact crater, and uh, it's about 15 meters to go through the, the Balazoic carbonates to reach the, the rim wall of the, of the cattle crater where the, it's the closest. But, but all, all of this we have, it's buried under the, under the sedimentary cover. Uh, here, where we are standing today, okay, well, this is a sixth floor, so we add something. But anyway, well, it's about 100 meters. And we go uh, to the southern Estonia, it's about five to 700 meters in excess. And, and you go further uh, to the Latvia, Lithuania, and, and Sinkalininger there. But anyway, well, it, it goes down to the two, 2.5 and then uh, uh, kilometers. But the point here is, important point, of course, here is, this is a continuation of the, the same crystal basement you have in Espo. And here we are in Tallinn, and we throw back every kind. But I'll, I'll come back to that. This. So, um, but if I jump back to this, uh, the map I showed you with um, uh, different mineral resources, uh, uh, their distribution in Estonia, and, and then if we'd ask, okay, well, this is, as I said, this, this is are all sedimentary uh, uh, resources, uh, 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 different types, and, and as I said, we, we do have only two kind of recognized uh, 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 mineral resources in the crystalline basement. And uh, one is, uh, one is uh, the, the granite, uh, the Mardu, massive actually, the Rabakivi, uh, that has been defined. And then, then of course, we do have the, the iron ore in, in Yofi. And you were shown, those who, were, who attended the, the excursion, that you were shown the new trail course from, from this Yofi. Magnetic canometer. Uh, 
the, the Mardukranite is, well, sorry for saying this, but this is just theoretical. Well, there are different things, and there are people who, who tell you that this would be a, a really bad idea to use this Mardukranite uh, to making aggregate, a crystalline aggregate. And, and as y uh, you as a geologist, you know that this is, uh, this is why it is so, because it is rubber and you don't, don't want to use this, this kind of material with large uh, Felsberg crystals uh, breaking apart uh, into smaller and smaller pieces for, for aggregate. But, but the UFO is something real. And, um, and, uh, and this has kind of like... Uh, uh, the people have, have been looking uh, into the UFO magnetic anomaly for, for, for 100 years already because it was noticed first this magnetic anomaly deviating, uh, making deviations in, in magnetic um, uh, compasses already in, in, uh, in last century 20s and it was drilled in, in, in first time in, in 30s and for, uh, late, late 30s. And as you see, well, those are kind of different drill cores made there, the, 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 the very first ones here and then, then was the exploration uh, period in um, in Soviet time in um, in 60s mainly in 60s uh, uh, and now just recently those two are made here into the the, the strongest anomaly well and this is a magnetic anomaly mapped by by Yuri Plato and uh, uh, co-authors and really shows that this is a strong magnetic anomaly and we we did know well already from the the very first exploration uh, back in back in uh, uh, 1930s, that the the reason for for this uh, for this anomaly is oh yeah uh, are there, it, it's it's really the iron ore so it's right uh, uh, there is a strong magnetic uh, magnetite uh, mineralization uh, looks like a banded iron formation type but th this is as as I I've told several times in in last uh, months uh, giving some uh, related presentations that uh, the origin is uh, really tricky so it's like it, it, it has a, the different signatures and uh, that there is still work to do to understand it's it's really the origin and um, the estimated estimated resources up to uh, 900 mill million tons that you I guess that you were told on uh, on uh, Thursday uh, no not the Thursday but Wednesday uh, when you when you visited the area and uh, well, it ex extends well. The the cover is there about uh, 100. Um, uh, it, it's uh, 140 meters below the sea level. The crystalline basement starts, but but uh, uh, but these magnetite rich uh, zones are uh, go through the the whole pile. But anyway, well, and what is also important to mention that it, it, there are two different types of mineralization: there are the magnetite and the magnetite sulfide mineralization in those uh, yellow yellow zones. So this, this has been, and, and this is a real, real thing, uh, how the quality, the iron content, and, and, and its conditions, and uh, the reserve itself are not really. This is, this is uh, just recently, uh, the geological survey published a report, the exploration potential uh, report um, to study the exploration potential of the UV uh, anomaly. Uh, according to the kind of like the European rules, the international rules, and it, it's quite clear that it's not at this very moment. It's not economically. Uh, uh, that there is no reason to 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 start uh, uh, mining and processing of it. But again, well, we we come to back to that. Uh, what is maybe important that uh, that we've been. Uh, always concentrating this UFO magnetic anomaly, the iron ore that in, in our crystalline basement, and this is up to up to up to now, uh, up to today. Well, this is the only real uh, resource being considered there. Uh, there are uh, different similar uh, uh, positive magnetic anomalies, and this is a map uh, made by Geological Survey. Uh, Mikhail Shotkalenko is is uh, just here. Well, he's an author. Yeah, and then as you see, well, okay, this is this is the strongest. So this is an estimated uh, uh, resource, um, uh, uh, and and then it's it's it, uh, well, it, it's small numbers here show the depth of the of the body. The body center in um, uh, has it uh, 
uh, as re revealed uh, by the uh, modeling. So, well, there are several, but they are all definitely the UV is, is the biggest, uh, and all those are much smaller, and, and the depth is much, much greater, because if you see here, well, this is, let's say, within, let's say, it's a half a kilometer, but um, if, you, if you go here, for example, in, in Mare Mare, well, this is at, at the one kilometer depth. And uh, just, this is just an uh, estimate. Well, um, so it, it seems, okay, well, we do have the UFI magnetic anomaly, this is, um, and, uh, but uh, it doesn't have really the, uh, uh, the economical uh, um, value. Okay, with the hazard value, value but not, not that, that uh, present conditions. And, uh, but but is, is that all? Okay, apart all the uh, granite for the aggregate. Um, actually, it's not. So the people have been working, well, the, the crystalline basement exploration has been going on uh, uh, since, I, I guess, it, uh, if I remember correctly, then the, the first, uh, first time, more than 100 years ago, the, uh, the bells were drilled here in the Italian area and they reached the crystalline basement, but they, 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 this was drilled without the, uh, the, the core. Uh, so, uh, but well, the knowledge of the, that we do have the crystalline basement beneath the sedimentary cover and very similar to that to the the one that is exposed in Finland. Well, it's more than 100 years old, but over the the period starting from uh, 1950s, the the Estonian, the uh, I mean. To the sedimentary cover, there are thousands of drill cores, and and this map shows uh, those small, small white dots show the the cores that that go into the crystalline basement. And uh, of course, well, the northern Estonia, where the the overburden is is less, and uh, uh, and, the, uh, and this area has been uh, mapped at the greater uh, density, well, different scale. So we have, we have the kind of understanding, or a much better understanding than in, in the southern Estonia, where only f very few go uh, through the sedimentary cover. But the point here is that, uh, 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 okay, Jofi, well, this is, this is we know, there are some, the mother that uh, uh, anomalies that been, uh, magnetic anomalies been chilled. But during this exploration time, the, uh, also it was paid attention uh, to the sulfidic mineralization. So, uh, uh, and wherever you had in, in the cores, the, the, the geologist noticed something shiny, they, they looked it closer and if necessary took a sample to analyze what it is. And uh, this is a, a the really nice uh, figure from uh, Seam's uh, uh, compilation of the earlier data actually based on, on the work that was uh, compiled in, in uh, 1991 by uh, late uh, Walter Bettersel. So, but, but this shows kind of the indications of the copper, uh, lead and, and zinc mineralizations. Uh, this is, uh, well, as, as you see, the values are in, in present. So it's like in, in those cores, what is uh, really important that never uh, any, any of those cores intersected really kind of like rich, mm, uh, sulfidic base metal, uh, and, and base metal, uh, uh, deposits, but there are indications all around, and those cores here mark the the most potential areas. And in in crystalline basement, those uh, those are kind of like occurrences where it was noted that it was. And here, this is an sonda oilaste area that this has been considered as, as the most most interesting and most promising. Uh, 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 indication of the uh, sulfidic mineralization in, in crystalline rocks, and and indeed, well, uh, and it was uh, heavily drilled. Uh, if I'm correct, m about 15 cores, drill cores were made in the area, or something like this. So um, back in Soviet time, and um, and were analyzed uh, using the methods that were available at this time, ma mainly spectral methods, which are not really quantitative, and we. Well, this was one of the targets um, that the Estonian Geological Survey, together with universities, studied to, to see what this kind of like. If we take the uh, using modern, modern, uh, modern methods and uh, quantitative methods and analyze uh, this material and uh, modern approach, 
uh, for geological exploration, what uh, 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 well, what what come well, what what is a value then? Because or what is a potential potential then? And and the work was done. This is just one of the uh, the most studied, probably one of the most studied cores. This is a F one hundred eighty eight, and this is you, you see. Well, those are kind of like a point analysis, and, and then you, you see that the copper goes up, and then you have a, a lead up here, and then you, for some reason, um, sink down there. And, uh, well, it looks, okay, why not? But then, uh, sensing, and then this is true, that sensing that we do not have the enough experience doing such work, and this is what where I started, so it's like, so, Sedimentary mineral resources, well, we do have the experience, we have the people um, who have done it, and we have a young generation co coming, but, but uh, there are very few people who have been really working with the crystalline basement and it, its exploration potential. And then the Aurora exploration was uh, asked uh, by, by Survey to join in, and Petri Beltonen and his uh, uh, associates did a uh, survey according the kind of like the exploration rules in, in uh, internationally accepted rules, and and that uh, that's a pretty sad conclusion that they made. And uh, okay, well, um, and only well they discovered just well this is done uh, uh, interval sampling and, and and that's it. And and even even harder or kind of like. Um, made uh, personally me pretty sad that uh, oh that uh, all those indications and, and let's think about the the map i showed just showed that they they don't have any any value in this sense because and this was uh, their conclusion that the soviet time sampling point samples was was really selective and we we must admit that and uh, and new well uh, uh, let me put it in this way that uh, it, it does, doesn't say that this, all this data that uh, the work that has been done is uh, is not useful. Well, when it comes to petrography and, and the whole rock descrip descriptions, etc., this is all, well, it couldn't have been done better. Well, the terminology doesn't match and uh, there is a lot of translation in, in geological terms uh, to do, but, but the work is, uh, the people were experienced and they did know what they did. But when it comes to the potential, exploration potential for the mineral resources, then the new thinking and new approaches are needed. That, that's really uh, important here. Anyway, okay, well, does this mean, well, this is, uh, this is a pretty negative note here. But, uh, but, well, does this mean that we do not have any, uh, any kind of potential in, in crystalline basement? Uh, uh, I, I'd say that not, so I, I'm back to this figure and showing that the basement here, crystalline basement here, uh, is the same that you have in, in Finland. And, well, and Geological Survey of Finland has published uh, tons of maps and papers and done huge research, and I'm looking all this, hmm, well, Okay, well, I, I know that, well, I, uh, we all pretty well know that, uh, that, that uh, everything up here and actually in, even here is, is, is a geologically very different of, of that that we have here in Estonia. But look at this, all this softened part. Hmm. Where, well, and those dots, if you can't see, well, the, there is a nickel, there is a copper, there is a, okay, gold shines here everywhere. Hmm. There is, okay, some iron ore, well, uh, this is, we, we, I, I come to that, but anyway, all different kinds of, uh, of elements, oh, five minutes, exactly, well, this is me, and I still have, uh, uh, oh, 12 slides, so, okay, now it comes, now it comes, anyway, <laughs> there is a potential, okay, we know that the, the current understanding is not like uh, that, okay, that Estonia is a continuation of the, the Finland, Actually, well, uh, most part of the Estonia is, is, a, is a Bergschlagen in, in central Sweden, kind of like structurally and uh, similar. But this, uh, this zone here, we call it Aludagus, uh, is very similar to that in, in, uh, in, in Finland. So there is still connection to the Finland and to tell the Bergschl Bergschland is, is not uh, 
bad at all, uh, also, because, uh, well, this is one of the, the historically most known mining areas. So, my question is, and then you see, well, everything, iron, manganese, tungsten, uh, coal, and uh, no noble metals, and etc. etc. We, we know all this. So, my question is, is there still? My question is, is there any potential? Looking at the, the Finnish experience, well, the, the work that uh, the Finns have done, looking what we might expect uh, from the correlation to the Perkslagen, uh, where are my resources here? So, anyway, okay, mm, uh, make, uh, wrapping it up. Okay, that is something. And okay, we did know about iron. We had some indication of the some base metals, uh, include uh, uh, mainly copper, uh, copper, lead, and zinc as well. So, but uh, during this exploration of the new cores that uh, that the student geological uh, young guys uh, at the geological survey did, they they stumbled on, on the uh, lullingite and arsenoperite. And those who have been uh, working with with uh, noble metal mineralization, the bulb lights. So, and we, we looked it uh, closer, and soon we found uh, sulfur salts, the bismuth, and, um, and um, uh, silver uh, uh, mineralization in, in those rocks. And those are all in, in Yofi. And, and then, well, soon we, we found already uh, telluric mineralization with, with uh, native uh, bismuth. And well, and finally, that was a moment that we found the coal, native visible coal there. So, um, and all it seems to be a secondary. Well, uh, okay, well, this bright spot usually doesn't tell you anything. Well, this is a scanning electron microscope backscatter. It can be anything, but okay, well, we, we have the methods to, to tell that, yes, this is really the gold. And not only, the, this is not, I've, I've been showing this uh, figure uh, many times and uh, but we have much more, so it's like it's much more versatile, uh, all the picture. And uh, uh, so there is probably some, uh, uh, some, some potential, but the, the problem is that, uh, well, we, we started, we were, we were, and the first interpretation for us was uh, this mineral association and chemical association tells that this is or orogenic cold. But if you ask me, I'm not certain anymore because there are different things that do not kind of like, I'm, I'm reading papers uh, and reports from, for example, uh, um, those uh, wonderful work that Pasielo has done in at the survey. So, and I'm confused. And, and this is actually where the, the thing comes that uh, what, what I, I'd like to tell in, in the very end that, that uh, all this experience, we, we, we can look at those rocks by ourselves, and we and certainly we, we in, in in some time we, we'd learn something about it, but uh, and to come to some to, to kind of like realistic conclusion, but actually, well, this is this is uh, this is a moment where I think that we really need this cooperation with the survey, but there is another t tiny problem, that uh, the tiny problem is could uh, I'm wasting time, but anyway. Um, has any of those dots here? Okay, blue and, and for example, this is in, in, in Rompas, I guess. But anyway, has been discovered using just drilling or all those finds, the first indication comes from the surface, from tills or something like this, how it is? No one knows. <laughs> but anyway, I, I guess that the, 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 the tiny problem is that all this that if we if we ask where and how to look, then you know drilling is not the effective method. Well, as you see, we we need to do our homework in the geophysics, definitely geophysics. Okay, this is a uh, gravity anomaly. Well, this is one to two thousand uh, uh, two hundred thousand uh, scale, but this is not the main thing, as you know. Uh, the the main thing is to to work through the all the geophysical iron magnetic data we have. Unfortunately, there is a thing that uh, this part has been mapped of this part uh, one to two hundred thousand. This is uh, one one to twenty five thousand, and this is one to fifty. So it's like definitely we we the uh, detail here is is much less. Anyway, I I've used up. My, I I I wanted to tell you many things about, but um, but I I sum up here 
Um, I feel myself, as I said, I'm the hobby geologist in this field, so I, I, I feel myself confused right now. And I really hope that, uh, that um, the people, you, with experience, could, could tell us, at least tell us, which way to go. If you don't tell the answer, go, okay, this is like with, you know, the, 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 the fishing rod thing. You don't give the fish, but give the fishing rod, so please. <laughs> okay, that's all from me. Sorry. Thank you, Carla. <laughs> Any questions for Kalle? Everything is just, just a question that I've told. Uh, yeah. <laughs> In fact, you probably raised more, more questions. Absolutely. Uh, than Absolutely, yeah. yeah. <coughs> I should have <coughs> said it before. That just this is uh, just the only question marks. Yeah, which is quite normal. Yeah, but, but this, no, this, this, this is a beauty of it. Sorry, but it's... No, absolutely. Okay. No questions? Yes. Yes, Alan. Ah. I guess it's more a comment than a question. I mean, you probably know about this. Uh, the geophysical studies is, is the one that we will start to point you out to know the direction. And you know the problems with the geophysics here in Estonia as well. Yeah. Uh, but there is a lot of uh, uh, new technologies using machine learning that, that could yeah. be used you know, in Finland and try to understand what's the geophysical response, where they have found the occurrences and then go and try to replicate this here and see if it is possible. Yep. That, that that's, might be one solution now, using machine learning to use like large algorithms with large data bases mm -hmm. to try to point it out to this. Yeah, exactly, exactly. This is, this is, uh, this is a way that we'd, we'd go actually. But as I said, there is a problem that, that data sets. Uh, I think that machine learning can, can be as good as all the, the, the data. So it, it doesn't invent, uh, make something new. Well, it's used, and I think that the for, uh, the aeromagnetic, and this is uh, that the, the the coverage, the scale is so much different. So, uh, uh, for example, this uh, northeastern uh, block, this Aludagosa, well, this has been mapped, and, and this is this is the one that is similar to the uh, southern Finland. So, uh, but it's mapped at, uh, at only in the scale that is probably not enough to, to point out, okay, look, guys, there. Okay, yeah, but, but you're absolutely right. All right, thank, thank you very much, Kalle.